Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Lights. Go ahead and worship Him wherever you are. Give God praise. Give Him honor. Exalt Him. Hallelujah. Worship is something we do. Not something we listen to. Not something we watch. It's worship when we do it. Go ahead, worship Him. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Jesus, you are I honor you, sir. I honor you, sir. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. We exalt you. Blessed be your holy name forever. In Jesus' name we worship. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So before we go on, I'm going to play another song. It's Another in the Fire. Today we're talking about power. And this song says there's another in the fire. When you're going through that fire, it's not just you. There's another person with you there. And his power, his grace, his strength becomes all you need. Now, as you listen to that song, I want you to do what we did yesterday. Go ahead, spread the word, send the link to as many people as you can. Spread, send the link. If someone has told you to stop sending to them, it's okay. You can refrain from them. But never allow the expectation that someone will be offended to keep you from giving them an opportunity to partake of what is a blessing to you. So spread the word and send the links to as many people as you can and God will begin to move hearts as he wills. Hallelujah. Go ahead and do that now as you listen to this other song and worship with it. Hallelujah.
Lord. There's no other name. So come on me in the space between all the things you see. everyone and welcome to another day of restoration. I declare boldly in the name of Jesus, you are experiencing restoration in every aspect of your life through a restoration of God's purpose for you, a restoration of God's plans for you, a restoration of God's power in you, a restoration of of God's people for your destiny and a restoration of God's property in your life. Hallelujah. I assure you and I proclaim it and declare it by faith, you will experience restoration in every aspect of your life. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go right into the word of God. I want to encourage you to pray As you listen to the word, be in a receiving mode. Be in a receiving mode, praying in the spirit. And then we're going to turn towards prayer and focus and pray uh, as we go on. Hallelujah. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word. I ask that you will grant me words and thoughts from heaven so that we can boldly say that we've heard from God and not man. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, I'll take off from there. In fact, I'll take off from a little earlier. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. Today we're talking about power. Power. A restoration. And we're praying, we're receiving rather. A restoration of power. The things we've tried to do in our strength, the things we've not been able to do, the things we've struggled to do, we're going to see God do. We're going to see his power show up in those areas. That's what the promise of today is. That the things you've struggled to do, you will see his power show up and do. You will see accomplishments that you couldn't attribute to your own strength. Hallelujah. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 6. It says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'll say it again. It is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, that sounds like a mouthful, so we break it down very quickly. The Bible is saying that God, who commanded light to shine, remember, in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, and God said, let there be light. He was talking about that. He was making reference to the fact that that God who commanded light when he came and there was darkness, he, he commanded light to shine when the earth was without form and void, when things looked messed up, what God declared and decreed was let there be light. He said that same God is doing it again, but a little different. This time he has commanded the light to shine in our hearts, the God who is an expert at causing light to shine out of darkness is now, right now, shining in our hearts to give an interesting kind of light. Not the light of the sun, not the light of the moon, but the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. The illumination of the knowledge of all that God is has and can do. The illumination, the light of the coming into an awareness of all that God is, has, and can do. The glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So Jesus, in you and I, remember, as he is, so are we. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We have received the spirit of the Son, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Jesus, because that same spirit of Jesus, the spirit of his son, is inside of us. That spirit, the essence of that spirit, Jesus, is a manifestation of the glory of God. He is all that God is, has, and can do. Everything God is, everything God has, everything God can do, that's the glory of God, is inside of you, is inside of me. That is the light that is shining, you know. The same way that if you look at a light bulb, you see the filament, a filament bulb. You see the filament and then that's what actually glows and everybody has light. The Bible is saying that what really glows inside of us, the source of the light that you and I are called to shine, that the source of that light is the glory of God. That the glory of God, all that he is, has, and can do, is now in the face of Jesus, operating in, in the likeness of Jesus. Jesus is the manifestation of that glory inside you and I. So bottom line, the glory of God is operating in you. The glory of God is operating in me. That is the power source. That is the light source. And it's currently going on. And that is the grace of of Jesus. That is the, the unmerited favor that God has shown us. I've said this several times, that the unmerited favor that was shown us in Christ Jesus, what the Bible calls the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many unmerited favors. If you wake up in the morning and you didn't die, that's an unmerited favor. If you go through the day and you didn't die, that's an unmerited favor. If you got married to a beautiful wife, that's an unmerited favor. If your marriage lasts longer than 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, that's an unmerited favor. If you, uh, 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 so we have so many unmerited 
favors in our lives. But the favor, the unmerited favor of our Lord Jesus, the definite article grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is not all of those things. They are the result of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls the grace that we receive from Jesus the grace for all grace. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, Of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. So the grace of Jesus is the foundational grace. It's the grace that makes all these other things I've mentioned possible. And what is that grace? It is the fact that Jesus has become one with us. And in that union, the glory of God, all that God is, has, and can do, is now available to you. Is now available to me. Your spirit, glory to God, now has the very essence of God, the glory of God, all that he is, has, and can do because of that union. That's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says it this way in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is the love of God perfected. In other words, God so loved us that this is what he did. God so loved us that this is the, the end game of his love. The end, the total accomplishment, the end game, what was eventually done by his love. Several steps led to it, but this is the end goal. This was what eventually happened. Herein is his love perfected, that as he is, so are we in this world. So what he is, who he is, has become what we are, because we now have that same essence. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So that's the grace. So I, I said all of that about the grace so that you can understand something. That when God said to Paul, after Paul had begged him, there's this issue that I'm going through. I'm trying to deal with it. I've not been able to deal with it. I'm experiencing weakness. I am unable to sort this out. I have an inability. My power has gotten to its limit. I am not able to go beyond this point. In uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, what we just read now in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul cried out to God and said, Look, you need to take this thorn in the flesh away from me. You need to take this thing away from me that is causing me, uh, 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 making me look so bad because I'm unable to deal with it. And God said to him, Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. Now you know what that grace is. It is what we just read now, that the glory of God is inside of us. And God was telling Paul, that is sufficient. The glory of God is more than enough. For what you are going through. And so, that grace is sufficient. The glory of God is sufficient. The the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. As I speak with you right now, inside of you is the very glory of God. You don't need more love. You don't need more power. You know, we sing songs like more love, more power. No, you don't need more love. No, you don't need more power. Why? Because the glory of God. There is no love beyond who God is. The glory of God is all that God is, all that God has, all that God can do. There is, God is love. So there is no love beyond God's love. There is no love bigger than God's love. All of God's love is inside of you. All that God has, his property, his ability, his strength, his grace, his wisdom is all inside of you. And all that God can do, God's own ability is inside of you. All that God is, has and can do. The question is always that of unleashing it. That's that's what this whole world is about. That's what Christianity is about. That's what this whole, why we pray, why we have meetings like this. Is not to get God to crucify Jesus afresh and give us power again or show us his love again. No, it is to unleash what God has already done. Hallelujah. It is to unleash what God has already done. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so, how do we do that? 
Well, the Bible tells us. I want to give you three things very quickly. Three things to unleash the power of God in your life. Number one, be about your purpose. Your purpose is to shine your light. Remember, the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shown, not in our neighborhood, no, that's not his business. That's not his responsibility. Has shown, not in our families, not in our churches. No, no, he has shown in our hearts. He has shown the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in our hearts. We are responsible to shine it in our communities. We are responsible to shine it in our families. We are responsible to shine it online like we did this morning, sending a link to different people. Some of them will get angry with us. Some of them will like it, but it's okay. We are willing to risk it. We are willing to risk it for them to know where we stand, who we are for, what we are for. Shining the light in our neighborhood, shining the light in our vocations, shining the light in our locations, shining the light in our families. That's our responsibility. And it is one of the key critical things to seeing the light of God in your own life. The Bible says it this way. The Bible says, you know, Jesus said, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. So the Bible says in Isaiah 60, arise, shine, for your light has come. It's a prophetic statement of what we just read. Isaiah was prophesying about 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that we read. Isaiah was prophesying about the new covenant. When our light, when the light will be shining in our hearts, when the glory of God will be in our hearts. Look at that scripture again, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God. We just read that now. And the glory of God is risen upon you, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen. And Gentiles will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. And so, our shining is our responsibility. The light is inside of us, but we need to shine. We need to take responsibility to, Jesus said it this way, let your light so shine that they may see your good works. We need to take responsibility to make sure people know about this light. People know about the glory of God. That they may see your good works and look at that word glorify. That's glory of God. Glorify your father. In other words, to glorify means to acknowledge who a person is, what he has, what he can do. The glory of a person is all that that person is, has, and can do. To glorify a person is to acknowledge who he is, what he has, what he can do. The Bible says you let your light so shine that people will acknowledge all that God is, has, and can do. People will acknowledge the glory of God. To glorify a person is to acknowledge his glory. Hallelujah. And so that's our job. And it is the beginning, it is the first step in unleashing the ability of God, the glory of God within us. It is to become other people minded. It's to become Gentiles minded. I want the Gentiles to come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. What happens when you do that? In that same Isaiah 60 verse 19, the Bible says your sun will no longer go down nor your moon. Glory to God. Let's read that. Isaiah 60. Lovely passage of scripture. So Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 tells us arise and shine. And then in verse 19 it tells us what happens. It says the sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God your glory. You keep seeing that pattern. God your glory. In other words, God is exchanging glory with you. God is saying, my glory is now yours. Hallelujah. All that I am, have, and can do is now available to you. It's now going to be your glory. It says, your sun shall not go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your morning shall be ended. The result of shining our light for the Gentiles is that that light doesn't get turned off. 
You see, so you started out with evangelism, but that light remains shining and it becomes the power of your life. It becomes, it powers your life so much that there is no mourning. There is nothing that you are not able to deal with. Mourning speaks of inability to deal with stuff. When you are mourning, you can't help yourself. You mourn what you can't change. You mourn death. Somebody dies. You can't bring him back to life. It's over. You mourn the death of a business. You mourn the death of a loved one. We mourn death. When someone says, I'm in mourning, you say, who died? Why? Because we mourn not, we cannot mourn the things we can change. Mourning speaks of inability to do anything about a particular issue. And so we mourn. We mourn the death of a relationship. When we feel like it's over, there is nothing we can do about it anymore. So that mourning speaks of inability. And so it says, God will be your glory and your days of mourning will be over. But how did it start? Arise and shine. So you started out with shining the light of God's love all over the place to get men to come to know him. You, you started out with evangelism, but you ended up with your own life no longer having mourning. You ended up with your own life, your, your sun never going down. Because that light that you turned on for the Gentiles also now begins to bless you. Abraham knew something about that. Abraham responded to the call of purpose. When God said to him in Genesis chapter 12, Arise, leave your father and mother, and go to a place I'm going to show you. Abraham fulfilled his part in the purpose of God. The same purpose you and I are called to. Different parts, but the same purpose. Abraham's part was to be the progenitor of a race, a holy race of people called the Jews, through whom Jesus, a holy person, could be born. Well, he did fulfill his part. Jesus' part was to die for that purpose. You and I are to live for it. We all have our parts in it. But Abraham embraced his part. And the moment he did that, that light never dimmed again. The moment he embraced that and continued on that path, Pharaoh came against him and found out that Abraham, the glory of Abraham, was not just Abraham alone. Abimelech came against him and found out that there's somebody, there's another in the fire. There's someone walking with this man. There's someone, we don't see him, but there's somebody on his case. There's someone who you you have to deal with. His glory, the glory of Abraham was, is more than just his hands and his ability. There's another in the fire with him. And, and, and he went against five kings when they came against Lot. And they would have looked at him and said, are you coming to fight us with 318 men? Are you normal? They didn't know that there was another with him. That the glory of Abraham was not just the 318 men. That the glory of Abraham included the glory of God. All that God is has and can do. He was undefeated. He was not defeatable. And, and even the uh, uh, physical inabilities, uh, uh, like his wife not being able to get pregnant, and his body himself now dead, being a hundred years old, all of that, whenever they encounter him, they bow because he, was, he had unleashed the power of God. He had unleashed the glory of God. How? By taking his place in the purpose of God. Folks, these things cannot, they are incontrovertible. You have to take your place. You have to make the mission of Jesus your mission. You have to embrace it. You have to be about it. You have to be willing to allow people to persecute you for the sake of the gospel. When last were you persecuted? You sent a a, a link to somebody and the person insulted you. And then you shut down. You never sent links again because you're afraid of persecution. No, if somebody says, don't send to me, don't send to the person. Send to another person, but never stop. Keep sending and sending and sending. Go out on the street and preach the gospel. Share the gospel with this person. He might slap you. It's okay. Count it all joy. Go to the next person and preach again and go to another person and go online on social media. And preach and proclaim and share what God is doing in your life. Let them see and glorify your father. Glory be to God. We need to be very purposeful about this. It unlocks and unleashes the ability of God. 
You're no longer fighting for yourself. Now you have engaged supernatural power. You have released the glory of God because you have focused on getting the Gentiles to come to your light. Now you've unleashed the glory of God. And all of a sudden, things are happening in your own life. You're lifting up your eyes and seeing the, the, your sons and daughters coming to you. The wealth of the sea coming to you, like Isaiah 60 tells us. Why? Because it's no longer just about you. You have embraced your purpose. You release the power of God when you embrace your purpose. Another thing we, we do, I said there are three things. The, sec- the second thing is the casting of cares. Learning, after you've unleashed the purpose of God for your life, learning to cast your cares. Can you imagine Abraham? Abraham had the king take his wife from him because he said, she's my sister. Took his wife from him. Sarah slept in the king's house. And I'm trying to think to myself, if that was me, and somebody took my wife forcefully, and my wife is sleeping in his house, most likely I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. Abraham slept. Abraham knew that somebody else is in the fire with him. Somebody else is in every trouble with him. Somebody else is walking with him. There is a strength beyond his strength. And he trusted that strength that he could cast his cares and go to sleep, knowing that God will bring his wife back to him whole and not violated. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, the Bible tells us verse, from verse 6, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him. Humble yourself, casting your care upon him. How do you humble yourself? Casting your cares. You hum- In other words, stop thinking you can do everything. Stop, est- stop limiting stuff to things you can do. And stop overestimating your own natural ability. Depend on God. That's why I I sang that, I I played that song for us, Dependable God. Depend on God. Cast your cares on Him. You know, when I came to Nairobi, there was a lady, one of the first people I ever witnessed to, and shared the gospel with. And 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 she, you know, she 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 shared some issues she was going through at her workplace. And I told her, you know what, I don't have all the details. And, but I want to give you a prayer because I knew she shared with me, said she was Catholic. And I knew I was Catholic for a long time. So I knew we like to write down prayers. Our prayers were all written. We had written prayers for different situations. And so I said to her, I'm going to give you a, share a prayer with you. And this was the prayer I shared with her. She wrote it down as I was sharing it with her. I said, Father, I roll this case over to you and I refuse to touch it with my thoughts except in praise and thanksgiving. She wrote it down. She said to me some one year later, one year later, she had left that job. She, was, she, she had to go. She was asked to go. And I, that was the issue she was facing. And I, let, I gave her that prayer to pray. She had gotten another job. She had become the top 1% of, her com- of that, that line of business. In one year, she had made many, 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 much, 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 much. She's making much, much more money than she was making her former place. And she said to me, she said, can I take you out for lunch? I said, okay. And when we sat down, she said, I want to share something with you. That prayer you gave me, I prayed it every single day since that day. Every day I would lift up my voice. I would say, Father, I roll all my cares over to you. And I refuse to touch it with my thoughts, except in praise and thanksgiving. And she said, thank you, Pastor Noel. Thank you for giving me that prayer. And I was thinking to myself, that prayer is in the Bible. Casting all your cares on him. There are so many people that have heard me pray that prayer, that have led to pray that prayer, but they just didn't take it as seriously as this lady took it. We need to learn to cast our cares on him. When you cast your cares on him, then the Bible says, look at, look at that scripture again. Humble yourself under the mighty hand. You see, you see his mighty hand when you cast your cares. You see his hand when you cast your cares. When you are trying to do it, you, he, he has to step back. But when you cast your cares on him, you see his mighty hand. Lastly, so the first one is get engaged your purpose. Get into evangelism. Let's call it what it is. 
Become evangelistic. Become an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist, Paul told Timothy. So you, whether or not you are called into the office of an evangelist, do the work of an evangelist. And then in First Peter tells us to cast our cares. You've unleashed the power of God. Now stop meddling. Let God do his thing. Stop meddling through worry. Cast your cares. Refuse to worry about the issues you're facing. And then lastly, pray. Pray. The Bible says in uh, uh, um, James chapter 5, verse 13, is there any afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. See, prayer is not worrying. Some people praying, is, they pray worried prayer. No, prayer is you communing with God about an issue. That's not you worrying. My kids, when they come to me and say, Dad, um, it's time for my school fees, they, they, they say it and they go play football. They say it and they, they start watching TV. They say it and they go about their... Why? Because they are not saying it. They are not worried. That communion, communication is not worrying. It's not worrisome. They are not worried about the school fees. They're just informing me and they are praying about something to me. Well, that's how we are to be with God. Is there any afflicted? Let him pray. But what kind of prayer exactly is the best kind of prayer when you are afflicted? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. You see, weakness. Weakness. I'm not able to do. I'm not able to go as far as I need to go. I'm not able to stand where I need to stand. Weakness. But the Spirit helps our infirmities, helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. So I'm wondering now, what kind of prayer do I pray in this situation? Well, I have rolled my cares over to God. Now I begin to pray in the Spirit. That's the kind of prayer the Bible says. The Spirit helps our infirmities, for we do not know what to pray for as, the, as we ought. But the Holy Spirit makes intercessions for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And so you pray in the Spirit. And we are going to do that now. Is there any afflicted? Let him pray. So the next 15 minutes or thereabout, we are going to simply pray. We are going to pray. And we're going to pray in the Spirit. So we're going to begin by doing those three things. So first of all, I want you to consecrate yourself to an event, to the ministry or the work of an evangelist. Paul said to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. So say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I choose and embrace my calling to shine your light in my world. I choose to do the work of an evangelist, to bring men to salvation and to the knowledge of the truth. Thank you, Father. I commit to that. I embrace my purpose. You are shining in my heart to give the light of the knowledge of you in my world. I will cause men to know who you are, what you have, and what you can do. I, I commit to that. Somebody pray that prayer. And now say with me. And Lord, because of this, I roll my cares to you. I refuse to touch it with my thoughts, except in praise and thanksgiving. Every care in my life right now, concerns about marriage, concerns about business, concerns about family, concerns about my children, concerns about my parents, concerns about the different aspects of my life, concerns about my school, concerns about my career, I roll every care to you and I refuse from this moment to touch it with my thoughts except in praise and thanksgiving. Now, Holy Spirit, help me to pray as I should in Jesus' name. Now, go ahead and begin to pray in the Spirit. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pora braketeria non dregeshidaba. Maluke pora mahaskeria nande. Melia cronondre gelia mahakoje vrenete. Ne cronondre kelia karakate kere galabosha. I am unlocking doors. Now keep praying in the spirit. Keep praying in the spirit. I'm going to be prophesying. Glory to God, the things that God is showing me. And I'm going to be speaking. And anyone that applies to you, you say amen. And you. <laughs> type in that amen, receive it, but continue to pray in the spirit. Because there are things he's speaking through you as well. 
It's something God is doing with doors. Hallelujah. Several things. One, he's unlocking doors. Two, he's building up doors. So there are doors that are broken down and allowing, the, allowing a thoroughfare into your life and into your space that shouldn't be. And God is building up that door. God is building up walls. God is building up walls and tearing down walls. God is opening doors, unlocking doors you found difficult to open. Now here is the command. In the name of Jesus, let every door that needs to be opened in your life be opened now. Let every door that needs to be shut be shut in the name of Jesus. Let every wall that needs to be broken down be broken down now. Every wall of containment, every wall of limitation, let it be broken down now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the walls, the hedges, the walls that keep evil out, the walls that keep the devil out, the walls that keep that which is wrong out, let it be rebuilt. Every broken wall that has allowed the enemy access into your life in the name of Jesus Christ, let it be rebuilt. Let it be raised again. But let every wall of containment be broken in the name of Jesus. Let it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Mosca, Mali Crande Gebosilia Cranda, I Crande Gese Tecete, Le Cotoporo Boshicata, Rica Basata Libama, Macu Pranande Gelianandre, Gelianongro Dobrana Kera Mahai, Macora Bahaya Gelenondre. Somebody's eyes is being fixed right now. Eye, eye issues are being resolved in the name of Jesus. I command your eyes to be made whole. See clearly the pain, that pain at the back of your eye. In the name of Jesus, seize it now in Jesus' name. Be made whole, be free from that pain now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mali glianon, bre glianon, gredola, grake scota, ereko kora pratege lekete, likambro dia macrone vedos caradia, remosh caranande geselia, lima akos keta, lama akos keria, lama akos shana, ma acro de gebosa. Me e credila grandose vredi, a coruba gasataria macora brahaya, macoraba chandeligra matora brayakete, le cotocoto bragadi, macotocoto vregedosha, ricamande le prosegelia, ali grenondre gesudo branae, macrocoto procoto socoro dia, reboshicala ma askela ma andolo protegelia, 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 protegelia. Pragaduso lo vreduso 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 parubo go soto robo go shataya parubo go setele brogodosa riba gashata la brayeka makupra nande gele dia rehe copra dia rehe copra dagal agola gedeke de gezo galus bradiglia gotra galate kepona manto prageles coranande elianandre gele dia Le cronon de geledi cam opra ne cleanon gredus fregelia gronos ketelia mande. Le cronondra galiana hakoria gadista paradi. The solicitation, some ma igna nombre gediga. Keep praying in the spirit. Ma le cronon de gedia that what you have been soliciting, trying to get out of people. As someone listening to me, you've been soliciting. You've been trying to get and convince people. I'm talking about a specific incident going on. Trying to get them to a yes point. Trying to get them to release something and say yes. Now, roll your cares over to God and step aside. Because from this moment, God will get it out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. God will get it out of them. I want that person to share the testimony. Who is that person? 
Ina mokoria bala mahaya. Le grenon de gesidia. Bala ma Who is that person? Type I am the one. You've been trying to get things out of. Keep praying the spirit, everybody. You've been, there's something going on. You've been you've tried to like get them to a point of yes or to get them to release something. And there's just been an unreasonable dragging out of the process. But in the name of Jesus, go. Step aside is the word of the Lord. Cast your care, step aside. I'm getting out of them. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a release of that which has been held back. Let there be a release of that which has been held back. Let there be a release of that which has been held back. Let there be now a release of that which has been held back and you, which you have tried to get them to release. Now receive it from them in the name of Jesus. Past is obraketelia. Ma kora brahase keredi. Nea kora bradia. Lege bo shataya. Leke po ramahas nande. Le mondre geshida bakeria bahai. You will testify. Feel free to type I am the one if you are, if, if you are the one. Don't, don't worry about it. It can be so many people at the same time. That's how the Holy Ghost moves. Iman si klendro bos kentro bedig dia brodege. Regredo brogodo bo shagadai. Malie grenondre gedi. Negro lo mosso kora nande. Rekele bregedosa. Rehekora pasekere dia. Rehekele bronde gesidi di dialo. Didialo, didia bragado so coro dia. Le mo cora brahash kerana. Kerana, 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 surana. Zegle gleglo grog robrok te gegdra lacto ziga. Delgra anto prek te leg de moscotelia. Paluz melicrando, paluz melicrando, paluz melicrenonda. Ila cros ta baradi. Erenangre dola vrahateza. Brologogene dim bragalia macosa. Le moko prane kes mutirianda, mutirianda gulumacre to zubreana ketora. Alienonzi, alienonziva, alienonziva, malienongre dilia, malienongre do zuvra nahake, mahake prolosh kamahaya, malienongre de bosha kaliamande, ele montre gelia. There's a repainting, something about a repainting, a repainting, a repainting, kali porima kotos, keep praying in tongues. Ne keria naman tora bahaske, remos gredia, remo grodia, baraga degria non credo lacra, ele frenon si pradiglia na hateza, lea cora brahaya, gelianondra, gelianan. I receive that whatever it is, oh hallelujah, that repainting, that re beautification, that remaking in the name of Jesus, I prophesy it that. Whoever it is that has to do with in the name of Jesus, that remaking, that repainting, that realigning, re-strategizing, a remaking, a repainting, a representing in a new light, glory to God, that is acceptable, that is loved and is embraced in the name of Jesus. It is happening now. It is happening now in the name of Jesus Christ. Pala Mahasha Kala Baskela Branate, Ropo Kosokoto Robogo Sikatai, Ripa Kasha Katala Braga de Gebosha, Rekele Boko Solomo Koto Zeli Gabar, Maraba Gazigele Gebrogo Doja, Regebo Zigaraba Gabala Makajan, Lemo Kubranan de Geledi, Rima Koria Galia Makubranande, Rika La Braga Dia La Mahakoja, Rima Kaseketeria Da, Rima Kora Braga Dia, Le Rege de Brogodo, Ere Grege Dozi Galashka, Ere Grenon Zivre Nita Gabosa, Maragelia Garia Makora Brahaya, Makrogodosa. Someone listening to me, God is changing how you are perceived around you. God is changing. As you make this adjustment to evangelism, as you make this adjustment to the mission of Jesus, as you make this adjustment to evangelism, God is changing how you are perceived. God is repainting. Rebranding is the word. That's the word in my spirit trying to get out. Rebranding you. God is repositioning, rebranding you, and there will be a different response to you. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Malie grenon de gesida baraka tozelia. Le grenon de gelia ma angro de bosha. Angre de bosca. Angre de bosca. Angre de bosca. E koto de gesila. Malukara boske ranaya. Marreke bosha kataya. I karanon de gesilia. Ali granon de gesola mahaya. Marroko se krade. E credo goza baga la baga la baga la ba. Listen, that person I'm talking to you about rebranding. God is saying to tell you, don't, don't, don't miss out on this. Be part of the whole 70 days. Be part, part of everything beginning now. Be part of it. It's a process that God is going to do some work in you and around you. But he said there's a rebranding going on. And at the end of these 70 days, whether don't worry about what you've missed in the past. But beginning now that he spoke to you. Don't miss the meetings. Be in them as much as you can. Because there is a rebranding going on. And that rebranding is a walking around you and in you. And is a, at, at the end of it all, there will be a representing of you. And there will be a new response to you. Say at the Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I speak rejuvenation. Rejuvenation into bodies. Rejuvenation in the name of Jesus. Receive rejuvenation in your body. Rejuvenation in the weakness, weak, weak parts of your body, weak things in the body. A weak heart, a weak lung, a weak stomach, a weak blood flow or blood. Weak anything. Be rejuvenated in the name of Jesus. Be rejuvenated now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Lift your hand and give him praise. Lift your hand and exalt him. Magnify him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Whatever you have received, give God praise for it. Thank him for it. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your miracles. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Celebrate. But remember, evangelism. Casting your cares. Stay with your cares cast on God. Permanently. Whenever it's whenever the devil tries to bring them again, you say, I have rolled that care over to God and I refuse to touch it. Evangelism, casting of cares, and prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you for joining in today. I look forward to have you join me again tomorrow. Till then, remember, you are tremendously loved by God unconditionally loved by him and because of it you will experience his wisdom, power and favor for restoration. Have a wonderful day today in Jesus name. Amen.